Hello and welcome into the KE Report. I'm your host, Shad Markwitz, and today we're getting an update from BlackRock Silver. BlackRock Silver is traded on the TSXV under the ticker BRC and on the OTCQX under the ticker BKRRF. And I'm joined today with the president and CEO of BlackRock Silver, Andrew Pollard. Andrew, great to get you back on the show as always, especially when it's to talk about expiration results. You put out a, a batch of nine holes to the market here on the 8th of May as we talk today. And the headline hole here, 4.2 meters of 700 grams per ton silver equivalent, including 0.3 meters of 3,182, so a, a three kilo hit there of silver equivalent. And you have multiple one kilo hits along these different holes that were put out. So let's at first just dive into this hole, 138, which is a banger of a hole, but then also maybe widen it out to the other eight holes in this batch and just what you're learning about the deposit as it continues to grow. Yeah, no, happy to, and, and always a pleasure to be here. Yeah, hole 138, it's something we haven't seen in this area of the project because actually what we've got there is two very thick, very high-grade zones separated by about two meters or so of internal waste. So you mentioned the four meter intercept of 700, two meters away from that, we hit another five meter zone. Now, if you look at that as a composite it, it, and, and factor in the, the internal waste, you've got a zone that's 11.5 meters thick, grading 550 grams per ton silver equivalent or so. That makes this the thickest zone we've encountered at the project outside of our Victor, historic Victor mine or our first drill hole there into the project actually hit 30 meters. But this is very, very unique, both the thickness and the grade profile. And it's very, very encouraging at this point in our M&I conversion program, which is now effectively wrapping up once we get the final batch of assays here over the coming weeks. Well, in all these holes, you know, you're getting wide intercepts, really high grade intercepts, but you've made the point consistently that you're not interested in just ounces for the sake of ounces and a resource, you're looking at mineable ounces and you're looking at a way to develop this project. So speak about what you're learning from all the other holes in this batch of assays that you received and really that you've been receiving throughout the whole drill program as far as the picture that's coming together as far as continuity improving. Yeah, well, you're correct. We're driving this forward. You know, this year, aside from the resource updates and all the work we're doing with the drills, we're doing a lot of work on the permitting side and the environmental data collection side so that we can actually have something to submit to regulators next year with the name of going underground and actually starting to test mine this thing. So what we're seeing from, you know, not just these drill results, but all of the M&I conversion results that we've encountered thus far since we started drilling last year is that We've encountered a lot of very thick zones of mineralization, and I'm talking, you know, stuff that range, ranges from four to five meters or so, and in this case, you know, 11 meters. But what's very nice about these thick zones of mineralization are that they they carry a lot of grades. You know, in the news release today, I outlined some of the other thick holes that we've received from this program thus far, you know, ranging from four to five meters, and all of those range from say around 500 grams per ton up to 800 grams per ton. So what that means in the context of an actual resource calculation is the thick zones, i.e. the areas where all of the tonnage resides, is also where all of the high grade resides. Meaning, you know, not only are we locking in, you know, some nice tonnage with each of these intercepts, but the grade profile on this thing is going to be astounding. Yeah, we mentioned in the last call that the overall grade profile of the project it's probably undeniably going to be rising. And it's already the highest grade undeveloped silver equivalent project out there for development. So with, with the grade profile raising even higher, I think it's going to turn some heads when you update the resources on it. But let's also mention that you're not done here with this drill program. You've still got 10 more holes pending for the measured and indicated conversion program, but then also seven drill holes still pending for the resource expansion. And that speaks to the two-pronged approach of this drill program, part m &I, conversion and part resource expansion. So maybe just speak to the balance of where those holes will be coming from. Yeah, well, as you said, it's two-pronged. We're increasing the confidence in our ounces and, and our m &I conversion program is targeting the initial years of anticipated production that are laid out in the existing mine plan. So what we're doing is we're trying to show continuity in the high-grade zones there to de-risk the decision to ultimately go underground and start mining this thing. And then the other aspect of this is scale. Our resource from last year is 100 million ounces, but we've done a lot of drilling since, and we've added a lot of strike 
on the drills. So, you know, as you said, we've we've got a, a whole lot of holes remaining um, to finish off the M and I program here. We've got QPs under the hood already, starting to model the data we've got thus far, and they're just waiting for the last of those results, which they'll incorporate into a a new resource estimate during uh, Q3, uh, which will finally give us a, a, an M and I credit. But the other aspect of this is the expansion drilling we're doing. And really what we're doing is we're just working from the outer margins of the central area in the project, which is called DPB, uh, working our way outward. So I think it was at the end of February or early March, we announced significant step out success. I think we locked in about 500 meters or so of strike directly adjoining the existing DPB resource towards the northwest. And uh, where the bulk of our expansion drilling now is, is in that area, effectively going back and infilling along that 500 meter trend there to be able to incorporate that into a new resource. In addition, we I believe we've got some additional um, core holes out to the east uh, in an area where we announced a brand new discovery, a, a new trend really, that spans 1.2 kilometers from the eastern margin of the DPB area all the way to the, the edge of a property. So size potential here, it got a whole lot bigger over the last month or two. And yeah, effectively drilling uh, will wrap up this month. And uh, as we await the final results to allow all the modeling to get done, we're going to be turning our focus to those permitting initiatives I told you over the summer. We've got some geotechnical drilling, some hydrology focused drilling, and then we'll be uh, hopefully hitting the ground running for September with uh, a significant M&I credit that will carry some pretty eye water and grades. Well, and another thing you've mentioned as you're building towards this resource due out in Q3, I think you're targeting September for it, is that you're going to be able to bring in some of those ounces that were orphaned and didn't get included in the prior studies. So maybe talk about the work that was done to connect those areas in this overall drill program and how that's going to beef things up. At least you know that those areas are going to be coming into the fold. Yeah, well, you know, we've got a 12 million ounce deposit, we call the Northwest Step Out Deposit. Effectively, it's all along the same vein system, um, but there is a one kilometer gap in the trend uh, when we started that, that would effectively link up that mineralization to the DPB area as, as one contiguous zone. You know, as I said, we, we, we had success on the first 500 meters of that zone. So we've bridged that, we've effectively cut that gap down in half uh, with the other half looking pretty darn good. We're going to let all the upcoming assays for those expansion holes to come in, bake in, uh, so we can model over the summer. And then, you know, we've got a ton of cash that we've got to play with. Um, so, you know, I'm pretty sure we'll want to get back on the drills in the fall and uh, move forward and tighten up that other 500 meters or so. And, I mean, we've got a whole lot more to the east, which wasn't contemplated when we set out last year with that 1.2 kilometer zone along that very same vein trend to the east. So, no shortage of upside and expansion drilling uh, ahead, but project uh, the high grade zones. They're 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 the the tons are looking um, incredibly high grade here. You know, as I said, the goal from the M and I program was really just to de-risk the first, you know, two to three years of production because that's what's laid out as the payback period in our PEA from last year, and I think we're well on track on, uh, to do that based off what we've seen so far. So. So far, so good. Increased confidence and increased scale. Both are um, humming along quite nicely. Yeah, it's going to be nice to see a lot of the categories jump up from inferred to indicated and increased scale, increased continuity, increased confidence. But you've also, as you mentioned, with the expansion drilling, continue to hit new areas and continue to step out and, and find new pockets that you can continue to drill and, and keep pushing the envelope. All this, you know, again, is moving into that resource for Q3. What do you want to say as far as how this could change the economics, all of this year's drilling, and as you model it out, what will that oh, yeah. be doing? Because it's becoming a project of significance that can't be ignored anymore, I think. Yeah, well, you know, the biggest lever to economics are all the drilling we're doing in the early years, because the early years of production are, you know, an ounce today is worth a hell of a lot more than an ounce produced in, in years eight or nine or 10, just given how they get discounted from, from an economics point of view. So, you know, what I expect will happen is um, just as a function of tightening up the drill spacing on our M&I conversion program and with the grades we've seen thus far, I expect the average grade in that area to ratchet up. Uh, which which um, should have a very positive consequence for things like our payback period, our IRR, uh, and the overall NPV of the project. So, 
you know, adding mine life at the back end, you know, adding, you know, additional years by drilling out strike extensions is all well and good. But it's the optimization of the early years, which is going to have the highest lever on the economics. And effectively, that drilling's a, a complete and we're just waiting for the final results to put together and wrap up with a pretty bow. And, and I think once we get that M&I resource out, you know, that's something that all the analysts and all the traders at home will be able to immediately update their cash flow models and come up with some new numbers that, you know, that they're able to ballpark pretty accurately, given we've already got the cost laid out from uh, the report we did last year. So, you know, also keep in mind that when we did that PEA, we used a base case of 1900 gold and $23 silver. So, yeah, I think the economics have room to uh, <laughs> to get a lot prettier moving forward. Well, and I think the economics and the resource are getting pretty enough, Andrew, to the point where you've been noticed by a lot of key investors, but also I want to tip my hat to you that you're included in the Global X Silver Miners ETF, the SIL. So that inclusion, big milestone for the company. Maybe speak to that. Yeah, no, that was a nice news release to see. I think it was about a week ago. They added us to their index as of May 1st, and they acquired uh, over 6 million shares that they arranged outside of the markets. You know, this is my favorite time of year because it's it's ETF rebalance season. So you're, you, you know, the sill was a great one. You know, that's the biggest, you, you know, silver miners index out there is typically skewed towards large producers and, and uh, developers. And it was, you know, it's definitely a vote of confidence in there should certainly help the company from a prominence point of view and from a liquidity point of view. But, you know, with that now behind us and us in there, you know, I'm looking to the next big rebalance in the industry, and that's the SILJ. And I think that's coming up next Friday. So, you know, if we're in the SIL, I, I like our chances of, of getting in there. They don't, you know, tip their hat or, or anything like that. So you won't know until you see it in the markets. But that could be something to look forward to next week, as they tend to be a little bit more fat fingered when they establish their positions. Yeah, fingers crossed for you that their fat fingers are uh, going to be choosing BlackRock Silver as part of the rebalance. Also, I just think it'd be nice for you to mention that you'll be speaking at the Metals Investor Forum tomorrow in Vancouver. For anybody in the listening audience that's within driving distance or flying distance, good event to be at. Maybe speak to the fact that you'll be there in full effect talking to people about the company. Yeah, yeah. So I'll be presenting at the uh, Rosewood Hotel, Georgia. I think my presentations, I'm on a panel that starts around 2.20 p.m. pacific in the afternoon anyone you, you know you, you don't even have to come there i mean if you're in the area you can do that but they also do video cast live so uh, I'd, I'd suggest anyone that wants to see the update go to metals investors forum i believe dot com i could be mistaken but uh, you can register and see it live it'll a, a replay will also be available uh, in the days that follow as well which we'll post but um, certainly no shortage of things to talk about and this is going to be a very catalyst-heavy summer for us as we, one, wait for the assays and, and, and wrap our heads around our permitting initiatives, all leading up to our big resource in uh, Q3. All right. Well, I think we'll wrap it up there for today, Andrew. But yeah, a lot of news on tap, a lot of news that's already been coming out of the company, and it's going to continue to do so. For those listening in, I encourage you to A, check out the Metals Investor Forum. You can just watch it as a virtual participant and see all the presentations, including Andrew's. And B, definitely click on the link below this interview and it takes you right over to the BlackRock Silver website, straight to their news section where you can sign up for news updates, have them hit your email inbox, or just follow along with all the news flow as it's released to the market. Still a lot of assays to release and obviously all building towards that resource update coming in Q3. Andrew, great to have you on the show as always, and looking forward to our next conversation. Thank you. Cheers.